in this special Cat Lovers episode, Bondi Vet. A neighbour has seen the cat walking around with a big gash down its leg. Audrey's feisty patient Hi. needs help. Looks like he's been completely mauled by another cat. After coming off second best in a street fight. Hi. Good boy. A much loved farm cat has a potentially fatal eye injury. Oh, I love him to bits. He's the best. <laughs> It really is. <laughs> oh wow, she is an amazing looking cat, isn't she? And what's making this feline hey? so frisky? I love you. I hate you. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it's just one catastrophe after another. Manny, you look ridiculous. What's wrong? Yeah. Oh, I know. I love you. You make my. In Sydney, mobile vet Audrey and nurse Iona are on an urgent call out to pick up an injured cat. Hello. The owner's daughter has actually called us because she's really concerned about her mother's cat. Six-year-old Blackie has a reputation for being a bit of a bruiser, but this time he's come off second best. The neighbour has seen the cat walking around with a big gash down its leg. Oh, it's, it's massive. He's actually quite aggressive, so it's a bit of work just to keep him calm. There we go. We had to lift up couches to get this cat. Yes. Several couches. Oh my god. Yep. Yep. I'm not opening this up because she's going to no. run out. Can I see that arm, honey? Let me have a look at the arm. Oh gosh, he's nasty. So I've got Blackie in the van. However, because of the temperament, we're not keen to take him out and touch him too much because he's probably just going to fly off. I can't take a really good look because he's too aggressive. So I'm thinking we'll bring him back to the hospital, give him some sedation and have a really good look at it then. So we've just given Blackie his anaesthetic, so we've just given it th intramuscular through his thigh there. Just waiting for him to get a little bit sleepier so that we can actually get him downstairs, put him on some gas, and then be able to really assess that wound. But he's taking some time to go to sleep. He's actually still growling at us. So sometimes waiting for an animal to get sedated is like watching paint dry. So you've got to keep occupied. <laughs> Lucky for us, we've got some kittens in hospital and my favourite is newborn baby kittens. So we just get on the floor and start cuddling them and it's probably the best part of my day today. <laughs> Finally, Blackie is getting very sleepy. I think it's okay. So that means that I can take him out of the cage, put him into the carrier, and bring him down to the hospital to have a really good look at his wounds. Let's do it! Okay. Looks like he's been completely mauled by another cat. He's got six bite wounds on that arm, and he's got at least like 10 bites along this arm. Treatment's gonna be a little bit tricky with Blackie. I'm looking at the extent of his injuries and it's pretty nasty. There's infection everywhere in both arms. So that's an abscess that's ruptured and just all the skin's dying off. If the infection spreads into his bloodstream, it can be fatal. And what's really worrying me is this gaping wound. Am I gonna be able to close it? Am I gonna be able to get that skin together nice and tight? guy's got a super thick skin. It's, it's actually very thick because of all the scarring that's gone on in here and all the infection. So I've actually had to change my needle to a heavy duty cutting needle just to even get through. 
I've sutured closed the wound, I've given it a really good clean and flush out and I'm quite happy with how it's looking now. He's also got a drain underneath that wound because there's so much pus and discharge there. I just want to make sure that it doesn't refill. <laughs> I'm really happy with how Blackie's recovered today. He's actually going to stay in hospital for another three days. We'll take the drain out again under general anaesthetic and then we'll pop him home to mum. Scott St Margaret's practice in southwest London. We're gonna go see the vet. Yeah. A rare Sphinx cat is about to make a grand entrance with his owner Marie. Hello! Hi Marie, how are you? Oh, I'm at my wits' end, honestly. <gasps> okay, what's going on with she, Banu? Banu is in season and she's <gasps> driving me crazy. She's been um, slightly amorous with my husband Tim. <gasps> What's she doing? She's um, rubbing her bottom <gasps> all over him. And then, just to get him in the mood, she nibbles his ear. I feel like I've walked in on a bit of a girly chat here. <laughs> We're just talking about my amorous cat. Oh, right. <laughs> like you do. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> OK, come on in, Marie. <laughs> Banu is an incredible-looking cat. She's a sphinx cat, which naturally have no hair. They've got big eyes. They look a little bit like aliens. And she is really quite unhappy. It is hilarious as she tries to mount my husband. Wow. And nibble on his ears. Oh, she's trying to nibble on me as And, you, um, you know, she does favour, apart from you, unfortunately, she does favour the males at this time of the okay, month. Okay, and when you say favour, what are we talking? Rubbing her bottom on him right. and um, nibbling his ears. Wow, it's quite intimate, isn't it? It is. Well, let's get you out and have a little look at you. No, no, you're fine. Hey, shall we pour you out? Hey, because you're a very emotional little lady at the moment, aren't you? There, there you go. go. Oh, wow. There She's an amazing go. looking cat, isn't she? Wow. Banu is a really affectionate cat. She's so loving most of the time. Let's have a look at you. Okay. Oh, no, no. oh, dear, you are really in a mood today, aren't you? Dear me. I think Scott's a bit scared. I'm not going to lie. Oh, hey. I love you, but I hate you. <laughs> I think he's um, slightly petrified of Banu. When they can't enact their natural behaviours, they're going to get frustrated. Yeah. All right, baby. I don't know whether she's in pain or not. I don't really understand it. But basically, what we have to do is we have to lock her in the bathroom with her litter, her cat food and her bed, and it's the only place that she'll calm down. Spaying will relieve Banu's torment, but first Scott must check if the frisky feline is healthy enough to undergo a general anaesthetic. Normally when listening to animals' hearts, what we can hear in a healthy animal is lub-dub, lub-dub, lub-dub. Mm. All right, sweetheart. In the case of Banu, what I can hear is a small flutter, a little, a little tiny sound, and that is not normal. It looks like her hormonal endeavours are going to have to continue for a little while because um, I can hear a heart murmur. Oh. Which would suggest that part of her heart is abnormal. Oh. Heart murmurs really aren't very common in cats. It's like a ticking time bomb. One day they can be fine and the next day they can be near death. Oh. Oh. But what also is a concern here is that, of course, to spay her, we need to give her an anaesthetic. And an anaesthetic in a cat with a heart murmur is very risky indeed. It increases the risk dramatically. OK. So, unfortunately for now, <coughs> you and your husband have to deal with that moody behaviour <laughs> for a little yeah. longer. Oh. Banu will now need to go to Scott's referral hospital, the Royal Veterinary College, for a heart scan. If they find at the Royal Veterinary College that she has an abnormality in the heart that's significant, then surgery may be the only option to allow Banu to live a normal, healthy life. So Marie has got a very difficult and tricky time ahead of her. I'm pretty upset 
considering that Banu can actually die from this is, you know, I came in laughing this morning and now I'm leaving really, really worried. Oh, it's okay, Banu. We're gonna get you sorted, okay? Let's go. Come on. Oh, it's okay. At the Royal Veterinary Let's College, go. Marie has arrived with her grumpy sphinx cat for Banu's appointment with cardiologist Ilaria Speller. Hello. Hello. Are you right? Yes, I'm Marie. I'm Ilaria. Nice to meet you. Who we have here today? Uh, this is Banu. Hello, come Banu. to get her heart checked. So we are ready to go. Great. Please Thank come you. follow me. Today, a scan will determine if it's safe for surgery to go ahead. If Banu can't get spayed, it's going to be really stressful for the family and for Banu. But our main priority just now is the heart murmur and making sure that she's OK. Oh, I love you. <laughs> I know. It's all very scary, isn't it? Banu is a big part of our family. Everybody adores her and loves her. So to think there might be something seriously wrong with her is really scary. OK, Banu, are you ready? Good girl. Good. Some cats have murmurs that are not related to any disease, and some other cats, unfortunately, have a murmur, and that may impact their life expectancy and long-term prognosis. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, sorry. True to her recent form with Scott, Banu is proving to be a handful for the medical <gasps> team conducting the scan. Yes. Oh. She bit my nose. <laughs> I know. That's oh, called jelly. <laughs> Here. Yeah. Can you tell us? Oh, I know. I feel really nervous. I've got butterflies, and I think that's just not knowing what Ilaria's going to tell me about at Banu's condition. Ilaria, here oh, we go. Mummy's here. <laughs> What we found during the scan is that she's got a little hole in her heart. OK. But the hole was sealed. So we went hunting for other causes of the murmur, and we couldn't find any other. Okay. So the good news is that her murmur is not associated with any disease. So she doesn't need, you know, any surgery. treatment. Oh. She can go ahead with surgery. She can be spayed. There is no evidence of any abnormalities, and that is really good news. She's got normal life expectancy, no problems at all. We consider her heart to be normal. I'm so relieved yeah. that her heart is fine because we love her so much. I just can't imagine anything bad happening to her, and now we can get her spayed, which is amazing. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'll give you lots of cuddles tonight. Oh, yeah. brilliant. Oh. With the all clear, Banu will now be booked in for surgery with Scott as soon as possible. This is the best news that I've had all week. We've been so worried and it is such a relief and I just feel less stressed already. Come on, let's get you home. Get you lots of treats. Come on. Hey, Marie, how are you? Good. First of all, Good. hug for great news. Marie and Banu are back after the one-year-old sphinx cat was cleared of a serious heart condition. Well, we're not completely out of the woods, because obviously today we are going to have to spay her and try and reduce her uh, sex pestering ways. <laughs> <laughs> the moody little miss can finally have the operation she needs to get her raging hormones under control. We're just hoping from the operation that she can be her usual happy self, that she is nine times out of ten. <laughs> Come on! She's wow. got so beautiful jump. Well, you know, we're coming into um, colder times now. Yes, oh. Mummy needs to get a matching one. Oh. Banu comes out of the cage and is wearing a lovely knit jumper, of which Marie is very proud of. Knit jumpers on a sphinx cat? You know, OK. <laughs> Are we being serious with this? I mean... Banny, you look ridiculous. What's wrong? <laughs> she looks gorgeous. Ooh, wow, she is loving me today. It was because I mentioned your fashion. You never comment on a lady's never clothing. Never fashion. All fashion jokes aside, 
It is a serious day for this little lady. Now we just need to get you through this and hopefully you'll be a bit less cantankerous. Could you try? No. That's the answer. A resolute no. No. All right, do you want to say goodbye to Mummy? Oh, goodbye. Oh, I know. I love you. Banu is part of our family. She's like our fourth child. Everybody just adores her and loves her. I'll see you after. Be good. Well, OK. Bye. Bye, I'll see you later. Bye. Bye. See you, Marie. So obviously we're going to be worried about her today going under anaesthetic, but I know that she's in really, really good hands with Scott. Come on then, Chuckles. <laughs> Hi, Jess. Hello. Oh, oh my goodness. Hello. Yeah. Very, very happy customer. I'm just hopeful that because you don't look dissimilar to her mum, that she might like you a little bit more than she likes me. Hey. Hey. It's OK. But Banu soon makes it clear that Jess is not going to placate her. Whoa. Wowza. Right, so... Because she is so mad and so stressed, rather than trying to give her an injection, I think it's best we just give her some gas, uh, calm her down nicely, and then we can move forward with the spay. All right, so we're ready. Well done. Good girl. Even though we have proven that her heart is OK, I still think she is as a patient that we want to watch very closely. Oh, well, that's better. That's the one. OK, so she can just flop over there. Banu is finally under, but it's not long before Scott is feeling even more pressure. She's just not breathing right now. Sometimes they just go down quite deeply, and although the anaesthetic was given very, very gently, Banu has stopped breathing, and it's an emergency situation right there. Come on. Come on, sweetheart, take a breath. Is that her? Is that her? Yeah. There, yeah. and again. Yay! Good girl. OK. <laughs> Yet again, Banu, you are trouble. <laughs> Mm, yeah, that's much better. So Banu decided that she wasn't going to breathe for a little bit longer than is comfortable. So I think she just wanted me to sweat a bit. <laughs> so. Did you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know there's problems when Jess and I aren't saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> when it's gone quiet, that's when, when it's got quiet, then you know there's something. Yeah, yeah, OK. I wonder if it's because I was mean to her about a jumper. I was going to say, do you want to keep that on and we just tuck it up? Just as long as you breathe, I don't care what you wear. Just, there we go. Breathing is go. good. Jumper optional. <laughs> With Banu now stable, the spaying of the highly strung Sphinx cat can safely begin. All good up this end, Scott. Yep, yeah, happy. OK, so just about to cut. The surgery involves removing both Banu's ovaries and much of her uterus. So although this is a fairly routine procedure, I think for this cat, it's going to make a huge difference to her quality of life. This is a very hormonal, very stressed lady, and removing the factory for the hormones, the ovaries, is going to make all the difference in her life. There's one ovary there, and you can see it's very active, and that this cat is a very hormonal girl right now. I have to be careful what I say. I'm surrounded by women, so I can't say anything bad. Yeah. Jess, we're all done. She can wake up. Lovely. Right. Don't know if she'll like me anymore before or after the surgery. It's so hard to tell. We'll see. <laughs> I'm really happy that Banu has come through the anaesthetic. Initially, a little bit of a scare for us, but she's come through perfectly fine, and she's going to recover from this and hopefully enjoy a hormone-free life. Upstairs, Ona Marie is anxiously waiting for Banu to wake up. I'm really excited to get her back and give her some cuddles and give her some TLC um, and know that she's OK. Right, let's see how much happy you are after that spay. Oh, maybe not so much. Hey. Although her reproductive organs have been removed, 
It will still take several weeks for Banu's hormone levels <laughs> to settle down. Come on. <laughs> Banu, good. <laughs> Wow. What was all that about? I must say I'm a little shocked at how Banu has behaved towards me. I'm hoping it's just hormones and that given a few weeks, once they've calmed down, I can go and see her at home and she'll give me a cuddle. Fingers crossed. Hi, Marie. Here's your little treasure. Oh! <laughs> Hello, baby. What have they been doing? I know you're going to be so angry with me. Do you want to come and see Mommy? Oh, I know. Is wholeheartedly okay. unimpressed. I know. With me. Oh, I know. It's okay. It feels really good to get Banu back. I've been worried all day about her, and just to see that she's okay is brilliant. Well, thank you so much for looking after her. It's been um, a pleasure. Oh, oh, has it been? <laughs> It's certainly not been a pleasure for her, <laughs> I can tell you that much. Hopefully you'll meet her when she's a bit nicer. No frowning. Too young for Botox. Yeah. Shh, 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 shh. Keep your face calm. Yeah, you're a good girl. See how happy she is, Jude? Yeah. And one week after being spayed, Sphinx cat Banu finally appears to have calmed down. Ooh, is that nice? Is That's that a nice? Good spot there. <laughs> good girl, Banu. We are so happy to have Banu home. Her recovery has been fantastic, and she's calmer already. I know Scott said it would be a few weeks, but there's definitely a difference in her behaviour already. But the big test is whether Banu will finally relent and give a warm welcome to Scott. Hey, Marie, Hello, how are you? Hello, Scott. Good, how are you? Really well, really well, nice thanks. Nice to see you. you want to come Trust in? Trust you, well, I'll see. <laughs> how do you feel things have gone? Do you feel like it's made a big difference? It's made a really big difference. Already she's calmer. It's like she's happier. Like, we've released her from the burden of, of hormones. Of hormones, and yeah. she's like, Ah, oh, I'm so much better. And now the big test is to see if actually she is a bit more, well, nice to me. And I sort of stroke you a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Banu is reacting the way Banu does. She hates me. Oh, yeah, pound of flesh and all that. Oh. Oh. I think she really is unimpressed about my presence in her house and in her life generally, but I'm really happy to report that it seems like her life has got much better in the presence of Marie and the family. Oh, hello. Oh, well, that's an improvement. And you're going to launch. Oh, wow. I feel honoured. Oh, that was progress. <laughs> that was progress, that was, yeah. That was big progress. Yeah, yeah, I can touch her without her savaging yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> You're a good boy, yes you are. At Sash, Julie has just arrived from the country with her beloved cat, Jonathan. He's nine years old and his mum was wild. She came to the farm, she had her litter of kittens on our front veranda. You good boy, darling, good boy. And you're just gonna get that sore eye fixed. Julie's worried there could be a grass seed in the farm cat's swollen eye, so she's brought him in to see ophthalmologist Sarah Cole. Hello, Julie. My name's Sarah. How are oh, you? Oh, no, pretty good. How are you going? Good, good. I understand this is Jonathan. Yes. Now, um, if you'd like to come through, I thought we'd start with the consult. Okay, that's fine. Hey, sweetheart. The eye was, was looking worse each day and getting swollen and uh, sort of pussy looking. So I'm just going to pop the light down. So I'm just looking at the surface of his eyes, so looking at the eyelids themselves, the conjunctiva and the, the cornea. Grass seeds are such a threat because they can actually migrate into lots of different areas of the body. So he's got a lovely optic nerve head and very pretty retina. And the thing we're most worried about is actually the grass um, seed migrating into the eye because that would mean he would have to lose his eye. 
So when I actually touch the eye itself, he's not uncomfortable. No. But when I touch below, he is quite uncomfortable. And yes. you can see all that's where all a lot of that discharge is coming from. Yeah. And maybe the problem is under the eye rather than behind? So, um, yeah. So my biggest concern with Jonathan is have we got a grass seed um, that I can't see on my examination with my tools today? Um, and often they're quite well hidden. And my secondary concern is are we not dealing with inflammation but are we dealing with a type of cancer? So what are you looking for there? And I'm just feeling the edge of the orbital rim, so where the eye actually sits, just to see if there's any abnormalities between the two eyes. And I do think he's a little bit pa pa painful as well. So we certainly see ty types of cancer around the orbit and around the eye, which can be painful. That would mean something bad for his, him systemically. So trying to rule that out for the owner, uh, for Julie, because um, she obviously loves him so much. You're a good fella, Danny. Good boy. Oh, I love him to bits. He's wonderful. Uh, he's the best. <laughs> he really is. He'll be right. We love him. To work out what's causing the concerning inflammation, Jonathan will need a CT scan. There you go, sweetie. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty inflamed, so you yeah. probably would, wouldn't you, get a bit of yeah. contrast up to so the scan is actually done. Uh, we're just having a look at the images that come through. We do notice that a couple of the lymph nodes around that side are actually a little enlarged. And we're just looking to see if we can identify a foreign body, um, which at the moment I can't see one. Very occasionally, when we have a tumour behind the eye, uh, it can mimic inflammation. And that obviously is a much worse prognosis for the cats. And we're certainly not seeing any evidence of that. So to me, that's really great news. You ready to get up? Come on. While there's no evidence of cancer or grass seeds, Sarah suspects a small foreign body is behind the irritation. <laughs> little tongue sticking out. <laughs> So I'd be very, very hopeful that we are able to fix him. Certainly we'll be prescribing some anti-inflammatories and some antibiotics um, because I think there's enough evidence there to say that there's an infection present. Uh, so I'd be very, very hopeful that he will resolve. Hey, buddy. Hey, honey. Hi. Hey, little fella. Who's this? Yeah, is your mum? So he's been a perfect patient. The good news is there wasn't any evidence of any tumours. Wonderful. And um, there isn't any sort of um, inherent risk to the eye itself. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually really pleased with that oh, outcome. Oh yes, it's wonderful. It certainly made my day to give Jonathan the all clear and I know Julie um, is very happy about the results. Mm -hmm. You're a good boy, yes you are. Yes you are, I'm so happy to see you. Well done love. Well done. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. I'm so pleased to have him back and I'm pleased that he's had a good diagnosis. Come on sweetie, we'll head out home. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye, Julie. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, he's a nice old fella. He sits at the door sometimes and you know, when you're busy and you think, oh, I'll go and give him a cuddle. That's what he needs and he's right then. Just a bit of loving. soon have you back home and you'll be able to run around the paddocks again. Hi Jem, here's Carol. There's a lot of cat baskets in there. <laughs> oh my god, there's another she's, one. She's brought the whole team. That eyes are worth. Scotland's nurse Gemma oh, are sorry, also yeah, about to start out, yeah. a challenging day. Who's back here, Carol? George and Harry. I'm not George sure. George and today. Harry. Oh, it's good to see hang the on, brothers together again. Carol is one of the local area's most colourful characters. Say who's this? Oh, you've got the heavy one. You've got oh, Harry. Oh. He weighs a ton. <laughs> Amy, you're a big boy. Carol is definitely a crazy cat lady. All right, Carol, you better come in now. But she's fabulous. I really like her. There we are. Somebody say I'm, I'm a mad cat lady, but I'm not. I just adore cats, and that's it. I'm a cat person, and that's it, really. 
Turkish vans aren't known to be shy and retiring. And generally, she always brings in at least two. And today, she brought in four, so I knew it was going to be a handful. We'll weigh them all, and then we'll go through all their individual maladies, shall we? Carol has brought in Harry, Pixie, William and George for their regular health checks. Hello, mate. Let's pop you on the scale. Ooh, you are a lump, aren't you? She's well. Yes. Ooh, 8.75 kilograms. Ooh. <laughs> Someone's been eating well, haven't they? I did think you were heavy when I carried you. He was you. quite a big kid. Oh, right, oh, okay, right. we'll put it down to that, shall Thank we? You. Yes. Okay, yes, he was, was very big kitten. He was quite big. <laughs> yes, definitely big bone. Yes. <laughs> so who's this beautiful one? Right, then? this is Pixie. Oh, Things similarly cool. afflicted like her brother <laughs> <laughs> with the chubby tummy. You know, I had to keep thinking of different words to describe heavy. There was a bit of hefty, there was a bit of chubby, there was a bit of cuddly, uh, but some of them were quite weighty. There's another one. Come on, what kind of character is William? He's not feisty like the others. 4.9, so he's much more the weight that I would expect and hope for. So. All right, then, last but not least, Carol, okay, let's get George out. Good boy, George. All right, George, good there we go. Boy. Good boy. It's now time to get down to business. And first so, up is a much-needed manicure for a very grumpy George. Some weapons like that. All right, mate, all right. God, he's strong. Going, oh, yeah. For a fluffy white cat that looks beautiful, wow, he really does pack a punch. All right, it was absolutely crazy in that consult room. Now, Gemma, you can let the cat go. Look at go. that. Oh, well done. So what does Pixie need? She needs claws clip, please. Oh, what so are you in manicures and cats, honestly? It's not manicures, it's saving my hands. I don't... <laughs> well, it's not saving mine. Every time you come from now on, any Maybe nurse, this, any away. nurse that's been misbehaving, they have to clip your cat's nails as like a sort oh, of that a penance. Oh, no. Oh, that's, isn't that wicked? Really mean, isn't yes. that mean? Yes, it's not. Well, interestingly, you're here right now, so um, you can tell <laughs> who's been the bad girl of the month, day. don't you? I am not a bad girl. Right. <laughs> OK. Oh, there we go. There Good. Go. All right, so who's next? While Harry's about to have his manicure, George is on the prowl, looking for his favourite chew toy. No, no, no. The telephone wires. I cannot chew wires, especially in the vets. I haven't got a landline now. Three times he's chewed through the wire. Get out! Look, Uncle Scott won't like you if you chew his wire. Go away! <laughs> look, look, go away! <laughs> <laughs> no wire! Oh, well, at least veterinary work is fun, isn't it? <laughs> hey? Who can say it isn't a laugh? Oh, dear. <laughs> Where's William? There, look! William's in the sink. Oh, William's in the sink. What I think we need to do now, let's put the other three to bed and let's just keep William. Right. And then um, I think we all need a drink. There you go. All right? Look here, George, and come out later if you're going to be a good boy. I know you're going to whinge, but just try and be a good boy for five whole minutes. <laughs> With George behind bars, it's timid William's turn. So he's coming today for his teeth, hasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. I think William holds a special place in Carol's heart. She's had him for 12 years, so, yeah, there's definitely a connection there. It's a mummy's boy, aren't you? It's all right. He sits next to me, he sits across me sometimes, always likes to see where I am. You won't let that dopey George come on, will we? No, we won't. You can sit with me. He's my boy. Yeah, just a little bit more than the others. I know you're going to be worried, because I know that, you know, we haven't had much luck of late. Just, just a little bit, so yeah. I should be on tender hooks with him. You know, Carol's a very strong lady, but she's very worried today, particularly as recently she had quite a heartbreak in that one of her other cats, Betty Boop, died under anaesthetic. Well, Betty Boop, we lost. I wasn't prepared for that. Yeah, she was a little stray, I found. She was, she was curled up in the corner by the front door, ever so wet and thin, so I brought her in and she stayed. And I tell you what, the other cats, they won't eat much. It's kind of going to go into morning. It's really strange. Good boy. I can only imagine how Carol must have felt at losing her beloved Betty Boop. With dental procedures, we do them all the time. They're routine, but it's the anaesthetic that's the risk. And even with everyone's best efforts, sometimes tragedy can strike and it's heartbreaking. Don't worry, quite safe. Wouldn't be a Turkish van without a little bit of a fight, would you? Hey? Good boy, I know. 
there's always trepidation with any anaesthetic and a 12 year old cat even more so. But then when you've got an owner who is so frightened that she's gonna lose her cat under an anaesthetic, it adds that little element of nerves. I was watching William like a hawk. Breathing okay, heart rate okay? Yeah. All good. I like the name William for a cat. Yeah? Yeah. My brother's called William. Is he a Will or William He's or a Will. Billy? He's a Will. He's a Will. He can be a bit of a willy at times, though. <laughs> Can he? OK, there we go. All right, so let's just flip him over. So far, everything's going according to plan. Well, that's a shame, just as we get near the end. Until Scott discovers some decaying teeth that need to come out. Oh, come on. I'm really playing hard to get this tooth. To remove these sort of teeth in an older cat, they're actually attached by bone to the jaw and you have to put quite a bit of force to get them out. And I've known some vets have been very unfortunate and actually broken the cat's jaw whilst doing it, so. Well, we don't want that to happen for Carol's baby, do we? She'd probably break my jaw if I did. I think she would. <laughs> <laughs> it's always great working with Jem. She's a great girl. She's always good fun and she absolutely loves her job. All right, so that's it. You can turn him off. And she's really dedicated to the animals. And so, you know, working with her is always a joy and uh, we always tend to get a really good result. Scott, this brush you've given me, it's like for hamsters or something. I thought it was for your eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> good job you didn't say my moustache. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah you, um, your beard is very well kept. <gasps> <laughs> You're so naughty. I want to say bad words to you. <laughs> Scott likes to take the mick, but um, I think I give it back as, as good as he gives it. <laughs> Waking up, mate. Hmm? And just when Scott is convinced there will be no more problems, William has one last shock in store. Come on, wakey wakey. Rise and shine. He's taking a long time to wake up. In the back of my mind, remembering Carol's concern, it just made me a little bit more concerned than maybe I normally would be. Come on. Come on, William. Come on. Come back to us. Come on, mate. Come on, there we go. Now we're thinking about it, aren't we? Hey, just get your little bed. Yeah. Yeah, oh, shaky head. Come on, big boy. Here we go. William gave us maybe a smidge of a scare that he took quite a long time to wake up, but he did come right eventually. And we're able to then send him home to his beloved Carol. Hello. Hello. I've come for William. Later that afternoon, oh Carol arrives with another Sky. fluffy Sky. member oh, of her hello, white beautiful. furry family. Oh, oh, look, who's this? This is Sky. Oh, look, it's William in dog form. That's it. So your buddy. Do you love your pussy cats? Hey. I absolutely adore my cats. They're part of the family. Yeah. With the odd dog as well. We could have a dog. We could have the dog with the cats. He's been a very, very good boy. Hello. Hello His family. mama. He's absolutely fine, so it's brilliant. Yes, got my boy back, so yeah. Time to go, mate. Good boy, yeah, he's out of here. Caring for people's precious pets is a massive responsibility, and I do take that very seriously. But there is a little sense of relief when you can hand a healthy pet back into the arms of a beloved owner. Job done. There you go, cat and dog. And dog. Thank you. Thank you All very right. much. Come on, Sky. Thanks. Bye, girls. Bye, bye. bye boys. Come See on you then, later. Sky. Come on. Mind step.